Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to consider a one-sided version of the higher derivative test. And the idea is that this will actually explain why the higher derivative test works the way it does. Okay, and it will actually show something slightly stronger, if you will. Okay, and here's how it goes. You have a function, you have a point in the domain. The function is at least k times left differentiable at the point. Okay, and uh, k minus 1 times differentiable on the left of the point. Okay, so it's two sided differentiable k minus 1 times for points on the immediate left of c. Okay, and k is at least 2, so it's greater than 1. And assume that the first k minus 1 left derivatives of f at c are 0. So in particular, the first derivative will 0, mm -hmm. right? And because k is at least 2, k is greater than 1. And the kth left derivative at c is non-zero. So the usual two-sided higher derivative test, you just do everything two-sided. You say the first k minus 1 derivatives are 0 and the kth derivative is non-zero. Mm -hmm. Now we're just doing the same on the left. So now we can use information about whether k is even or odd and whether the kth left derivative is negative or positive mm -hmm. to draw conclusions about whether you have a strict local max or min from the left. Okay, so it's just like left and okay, so strict local max or min from the left. Okay, so let's let's do that. So suppose k is even and the sec or rather the kth derivative, which could be second, fourth, sixth, whatever, is negative. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in that case, what can you say? Do you have a strict local max or min? Well, let's first just take a prototypical example. So a prototypical example is negative x square. At zero, you are interested in the behavior on the immediate uh, left, mm -hmm. rather relative to the immediate left. How many times can you differentiate it to get a non-zero value derivative? And what's the value? Max of 2. So it's even and negative. Okay. Now, negative x square. Let's just make a picture for negative x square on the immediate left of 0 and at 0. So what does negative x square look like? Okay. Okay. So proof by picture. What do you think the conclusion should be? Local max. Local maximum. Okay, let's just fill in this table, these four entries, and then I'll I'll come back and explain what's happening. Okay, odd and negative. So odd and negative. So like negative x cubed, c equals zero. Well, what does negative x cubed look like? Well, remember, x cubed would look like that, right? So negative x cubed would look like that. And we are interested only in the behavior on the left of 0. So you actually get a local mean. Okay. By the how many times do you need to differentiate to get a non-zero value here for negative x cubed? Three times. And what's the value? Negative 6. Even and positive. So remember, all of these we are uh, we are doing things on the left side. So even and positive. Well, an example is x square at zero. So what does the picture for x square at zero look like? It's decreasing and concave up. Mm -hmm. So what do you get? Straight local mean. local minimum mm -hmm. and odd and positive is like x cubed make a picture for x cubed we have a strict local hmm? maximum maximum okay now Suppose I ask you to explain any one of these four cases in great detail. Why is this true? Let's pick an actual value of k and uh, an actual sign. Like instead of just saying even, I'll pick a number value of k. Since we already picked 2 when we did the second derivative test, let's pick a bigger even number. Let's say 4. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's say... 
So what am I trying to do? I'm trying to get this conclusion. So by the way, these examples are like the smallest size examples or the simplest examples. You could replace in, in all the things where you see x square, you could take any higher even power of x. Mm -hmm. And all the place where you see x cubed, you could take any higher odd power of x. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you could get similar examples. So k equals 4, you could actually take negative x to the 4 to get it. But let's just take the generic one. Uh, so what we assume, we assume f to the 4c is not equal to 0. Okay, and what will we try to do? We will try to use this to deduce that it's a strict local maximum without any other information. We'll try to give a general proof. Okay, so how do we begin? Do you remember how we did the one sided version of the second derivative test? Yes. What did we do there? We look from both sides. Okay, so we want to we want to do the case f to the four c is less than zero. That's the case we do. Okay, now how did we how did we prove the one sided version of the second derivative test? We used two tests, right? Mm -hmm. What were the two tests we used? First derivative test. Well, we used two first derivative type tests. One was just the one sided derivative test, and the other one was the first derivative on the left of the point. Okay. Okay. So let's say we are in this subcase. So less than subcase. Okay, we want to aim at the conclusion that you have a strict local maximum. Okay, so what do we do? Well, how do we begin? We are given the value of the fourth derivative at the point for a one sided derivative. Okay, so we want to use the one sided derivative test. Which, which case do we want to use? This one. Mm -hmm. What should our g be? I have differentiated it three times. Yeah, the left third derivative of f. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what will you conclude? Uh, this third derivative has. Third derivative has a straight local minimum. From the left. So this is the one-sided derivative test. Okay, and what is the conclusion? F3 has strict local what? From the Left C. Left C. Okay. So far, so good. Now, what do we use? Well, we know that the first k minus 1 left derivatives of f at C are 0. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what does that tell you? If the value at 0 at C is 0, okay. Mm -hmm. And that's a strict local minimum from the left. What does that tell you about the values on the immediate left of C? Greater than zero. Okay. For x on the immediate what? Left. Okay, and here we are using that f3. That's that's because the fourth derivative is the first time you get a non-zero value. Mm -hmm. right? Now what do we use? We hmm. use the first, first derivative, derivative test. test. The one, the usual first derivative test. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are actually in this case, f prime x greater than 0 on the left of c, f left continues with c, implies f has strict local max from the left at c. But now instead of f, what function do we want to use this for? The f double prime. The second derivative, mm -hmm. or rather the second left derivative. And how do we know that the second left derivative is left continuous at c? Well, because the third left derivative exists, right? Mm -hmm. So, f double prime 
mm-hmm. has strict what? This was positive. The third derivative was mm-hmm. positive. So what do we get? Strict walk on mean one. Third derivative is positive. Oh, so it's local it's method. sort of it's increasing on the immediate mm-hmm. left and continuous etc. The strict local maximum from the left at C. Okay, so far so good. Now what do we use? First the words we well, test. Well we have to do derivative. no before well not really. We cannot use the second derivative because the value at C is zero. So we have to we have to sort of mimic this step. Okay. Again, so what you know that f double prime at c is zero mm-hmm. by assumption. So what does that tell you about f double prime on the immediate left of c? Yeah, less than zero. Oh, by the way, I didn't say this, but that the but because the function is actually two sided differentiable on the left of uh, c, you can write this as f three x. Yeah. Okay, so what do we get? So we get f double prime, which is just the usual two sided derivative, is what? Well, it's a strict local max from the left at c and the value at c is 0. So what can you conclude about the sign on the left of c? Less than 0. Okay. Okay, so now we have run out of spaces, we'll turn the page. So just remember what is the last conclusion? The second derivative is less than zero on the left. Sorry? Yeah. Let me just read like that. This is just the second usual derivative. Okay, now what can we use? The second order derivative is zero at point. Well, now we have to use the first derivative test to say something about the. We already used that. That's how we got it less than zero on the left of C. Okay. So, so how is this going? Well, the pattern is like this. You begin by using the one-sided derivative test. Then you alternate between using the fact that the derivative is zero and the first derivative test. Okay. So that's how you do. So we did. Third derivative is zero. Then we use the first derivative test. Then we use second derivative is zero. Now we again use the first derivative test on what function? F prime. F prime. So we using this. This case. But now instead of f, we have f prime. So it's f double prime is less than zero. So f prime has a strict local minimum. Okay. Again, we know it's left. Uh, continuous because it's left uh, twice differentiable. So f prime is left continuous. So f prime has strict local what? Second derivative is less than zero, so it's decreasing. So yeah, yeah. Those of who are watching, you might like keep getting confused about minimum and maximum. So you can just like pause and think for a moment before proceeding. Check. Okay, so good. Okay, Put the minus here. yeah. So okay, so well, I'm I'm sort of being a little loose about the second left and second derivative because it's only at the point that you have to worry about whether it's left mm-hmm. or not. Uh, there's a little technicality there, but that's not so relevant for our purpose. Okay, so now what do we now use? Well, we now want to use, so we are alternating between using that the values of the derivatives are zero and the first derivative test. So now what, what's the next thing we want to use? The value at the point. The value of the first derivative at the point is zero. Okay, so what does that tell you? Well, when will a value of zero be a strict local minimum from the left? That means that the value on the immediate left is? Greater than zero. The value on the immediate left is greater than zero, which is just or x on the left of c. 
when I say on the left, I really mean, what do I really mean? Yeah. Immediate left. Okay. Now what? I want to use the first derivative test one last time. So what do I get? Well, this is all the same as f from x. Because it's twice different. Sorry, it's two-sided differentiable on the immediate left. So it's just the usual derivative. So what does the first derivative test tell you? We also know that the function is continuous from the left at the point because the left hand derivative exists. So you can use the first derivative test. What's the conclusion? Uh, f x has a straight rule for maximum. Yeah, let's just get this out again. On left of c. So, this is the first case, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, straight rule for maximum. And breathe out. Okay. So what is the pattern? We started out by using this one-sided derivative test. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we alternated between using the fact that the derivative is zero mm -hmm. and using the first derivative test. Each time what happened? For the third derivative, we had a strict local min. Then for the second, we had a strict local max. Mm -hmm. Then for the first, we had a strict local min. And then for the function itself, we had a strict local max. Okay. okay? So we are alternating between uh, strict local min and max each time we go up the ladder. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's why even a negative you get strict local max mm -hmm. and now you can see that odd and negative the behavior will reverse right because you are doing that whole procedure one more or one less time. Okay. The parity of the number of times you're doing that procedure changes so you get a strict local min. Mm -hmm. Even and positive, well you're doing it the same number of times as with even and negative but you're just starting out the opposite way. Okay. Okay, so therefore you'll end up with the opposite behavior to even and negative. So you get strict local min instead of strict local max. Odd and positive. What happens? Well, you have a similar sort of behavior as odd and negative, but you're starting out the opposite, so you end up also the opposite. Okay, okay good stuff.